Welcome to another episode of Hacker's Misadventures and Scale Model Modeling Feature Friday. Today, for something a little different, I'm going to be looking at something that people like, a topic people like, Japanese, World War II Japanese aircraft, and specifically some stuff before World War II. Now, as, is, as you see on the screen, the title of the video from Ed Nash's Military Matters is um, World War II German planes in Japanese service, which I find it, find this subject interesting. Particularly what the Germans had given the Japanese. But I'm also going to look at, a, after the video, a couple of things. A uh, site I, I go to for books and stuff. And some kits of aircraft that the Japanese had before World War II and just after World War I. So I have my coffee. So let's go and watch the video and see what we got. It may come as a surprise to discover that the Imperial Japanese Army and Navy Air Forces operated Third Reich-era German planes during World War II, and not just one or two, but dozens. From the mid-1930s, Germany and Japan maintained increasingly friendly relations that would eventually culminate in Japan joining the Axis with Germany and Italy on the 27th of September 1940. Germany's initial Far East trading ally was nationalist China from the 1920s to the late 30s, China being an excellent importer for post-World War I German firearms and aircraft. But unlike China, Japan was a rich nation with a well-developed aerospace industry of its own, and cooperation between the two grasping nations was inevitable. Japan would become a major market for German aircraft, including license building, and Germany a major importer of Japanese-produced raw materials and medicines for its growing war machine. Before the invasion of the Soviet Union in June 1941, Germany and Japan were able to trade overland using the Trans-Siberian Railway in the Soviet Union, as well as by ship, but once this route was cut, sea journeys were the only practicable methods. The Allies attempted a naval blockade of Germany, and at the Indian Ocean and Atlantic ends of the journey, German blockade runners were vulnerable to attack by Allied warships, submarines, and aircraft. Once Japan entered the war in December 1941, a combination of blockade-running surface ships and large cargo-carrying German U-boats and Italian and Japanese submarines managed to keep the trade flowing between Germany and Japan, which was incidentally the subject of my very first book, Yanagi, written back in 2005. Japan was very interested in German fighter planes. One of the first German types sent by ship to Japan were three Heinkel HE-100 DO fighters, a type that was not adopted by the Luftwaffe, even though one of the fastest fighters of its generation. It lost out to the Messerschmitt ME-109. It first flew in 1938, and only 25 were built. The Japanese purchased three Heinkel 100s for 1.2 million Reichsmarks and a set of jigs for a further 1.6 million with a view to license building the aircraft. The three DOs arrived in Japan in May 1940 and were extensively tested by the Imperial Japanese Navy, Germany also delivering a Heinkel test pilot, Gerhard Nitschke, as part of the deal. The Japanese love the Heinkel 100 and scheduled production, building a factory at Chiba, but the war in Europe held up the delivery of plans and jigs and production never commenced. Another Heinkel interceptor that did serve with the Imperial Japanese Navy was the Heinkel HE-112BO, 12 aircraft being purchased by Japan and known in Japanese as the A7HE-1. The HE-112 was another design that lost out to the Messerschmitt 109, and 103 were built, with some serving in the Luftwaffe, as well as the Royal Hungarian and Royal Romanian Air Forces. I wonder if there's any um, 
pictures or decals for some of these aircraft that was under testing because some of them were delivered in paint schemes, some were, weren't. The uh, German serial numbers were still on, but they had the uh, Japanese markings. I'd be interested interested in know if there was. I go, I did look up some some stuff for you, but I couldn't find anything else. Not because it's not there. Maybe it's just not online. The Japanese used the 12 HE-112s during the war in China, but it was phased out of Japanese service before 1941. In 1941, Japan purchased five Messerschmitt 109E7s from Germany for Imperial Japanese Army evaluation. An outstanding fighter, it became the standard Luftwaffe interceptor, with almost 34,000 being built. The Japanese evaluated the E-7s in mock dogfights against captured Allied aircraft like the Curtis P-40E and against their own prototype fighters, the Kawasaki Ki-61 and the Nakajima Ki-43 and Ki-44. The one message 109 was completely disassembled and closely studied by the Japanese, but in the end, the Japanese army rejected adoption of a license-built version of the 109, believing that the Mitsubishi Zero was a better aircraft overall. One of the Japanese prerequisites being long range, which the 109 sadly lacked. The Japanese found gainful employment for the 109's little brother, the Messerschmitt Me 108 Typhoon, purchasing 21 examples, 15 of which ended up being used by Manchukuo Airways, a Japanese-controlled civilian entity in the puppet state of Manchukuo, as the Japanese renamed the North Chinese province of Manchuria after its conquest in 1931-32. Dating from 1934, the Messerschmitt 108 was used by the Luftwaffe as a personnel transport and liaison aircraft during World War II, and the Imperial Japanese Army used the type in the same roles. Japan imported a single Focke-Wulf FW-190A5 for evaluation by the Japanese Army. This aircraft became the backbone of the Luftwaffe fighter force alongside the older Messerschmitt 109, and outclassed many Allied fighter types. The aircraft was shipped to Japan in pieces aboard a U-boat and tested against the Ki-84 and other single-seat Japanese fighters, and it was found to have better acceleration, climbing performance, armament and so on, and the Japanese rated it better overall than the Messerschmitt 109 and the P-51C Mustang. Interestingly, once tests were completed, Japanese records indicate that the single 190 was given to a reconnaissance unit, indicating that it saw active service in the Far East. However, details are sketchy. The other aircraft that arrived with the FW-190 via U-boat was a single Messerschmitt ME-210A2, a heavy twin-engine fighter and ground attack aircraft. It had a checkered service history in the Luftwaffe, with only 90 being built, and was replaced quite quickly by the better Messerschmitt ME-410 Horniser or Hornet. The ME-210 was extensively tested in Japan at the first Tachikawa Air Army Arsenal, though the type was of course not adopted by the Japanese. The famous Junkers Ju-87 Stuka dive bomber was shipped to Japan early on, the Imperial Army evaluating one JU-87A1 or B version. It was put on public display in Tokyo in 1940, the Japanese deciding not to adopt the type for their aircraft carriers. Production was considered but fell through, and the Stuka ended up in a museum in Tokyo where it was later destroyed in a US air raid. Some German aircraft designs inspired later Japanese production aircraft. For example, the Heinkel HE-118, a prototype monoplane dive bomber, 15 being built, was a competitor to the Stuka, but lost out in the government contract competition. In 1938, the Japanese imported two HE-118s for evaluation, and its design would influence the Yokosuka D-4Y Suisei naval dive bomber, used extensively in World War II. 
Similarly, the single Heinkel HE-70 fast passenger monoplane, bomber and reconnaissance aircraft was evaluated by the Japanese, its design inspiring the Aichi D-3A Vowel dive bomber of World War II fame. The most successful aircraft design sent to Japan was the Buka Bu-131 Jungmann, a biplane trainer. The Japanese license built the Jungmann for the Japanese Army, with the Hatsukaze engine 1037 being constructed, and for the Imperial Navy, with Kyushu K9W engines, a further 339 being built. In Japanese service, the Bu-131 was called the Nakajima E-8N. Similarly, the excellent Fieseler Fi-156 Storch liaison aircraft was redesigned and built by the Japanese as the Kobe Seiko Tego. Obviously, the Japanese were very interested in German rocket and jet technology, but getting examples to them was increasingly difficult for the tenuous long-distance submarine service between German-occupied France and following the liberation of France, U-boat bases in Norway and the Far East. Although a V-1 flying bomb was not sent, its Argus pulse jet engine was in 1943. It contributed to the Japanese Kawanishi Baika jet. Similarly, parts of a Messerschmitt Me-163 Comet rocket interceptor were sent by U-boat to the Japanese. It was reverse engineered into the Mitsubishi J-8M1, which was superficially similar to the German aircraft. Plans were also sent to Japan for the Messerschmitt Me-262 twin-engine jet fighter. The Japanese developed a very similar aircraft from them that only reached the prototype stage before war's end. All these German aircraft ended up being either destroyed by American bombing, scrapped by the Japanese themselves, or captured by the U.S. occupation authorities and scrapped post-war. Now the question you are undoubtedly going to ask is whether the Japanese sent the Germans any of their aircraft for testing. The answer is, not really. The only <laughs> Japanese really. aircraft confirmed to be used by the Germans were three Nakajima flying boats purchased in Japan by the German Navy and fitted to a German surface raider and used for anti-submarine patrols from the German U-boat base at Penang in Malaysia. Flown by Luftwaffe aircrew, the planes still in Japanese Hinomaru markings. No Mitsubishi Zeros ended up in Germany undergoing testing. Photographs like this one of Japanese Zeros wearing German-style crosses are authentic. However, the explanation is that these are Japanese aircraft surrendering to the Allies in 1945. The Allied the authorities crosses. ordered the Japanese to paint large black crosses on their aircraft's fuselages and wings. However, some sources do claim that a single example of a Mitsubishi Ki-46 Diner high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft may have been sent to Europe for testing, but I this like has not been confirmed. Too. I hope you found that very interesting. If you have, please do help support the channel at PayPal and Patreon, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. Well, that was interesting. Now, let's go on to some other stuff here. Now, I have this site I keep keep on my um, computer. It's all about Japanese aircraft. I think the pronunciation is um, Arsawasi. Um, I could be butchering it. Anyways, this is a good, good. This is a good, good place to get books. Now this is a little outdated, but they have some very good books on here. Now if this site wasn't still running, I it probably be got go off line. But I've been able to. Um, I've been able to get a, still be able to get, see what their publications are. So they got an on sale button. So you go over there, books and t-shirts and decals and stuff like that. I'm mostly in, interested in the books, titles and series, 
like you got yeah these books they have a book on just about every Japanese aircraft especially the one I'm interested in the um, Kawasaki uh, Ki-10 Perry it's a pre-war Japanese army fighter biplane fighter okay series you got these books you can get from them um, you get model art aero detail famous planes maru mechanic maru mechanics really good it may be in japanese but as the old saying goes pictures are worth a thousand words and their pictures and drawings are worth far more than a thousand words and their own publication so it has an about here it tells you what's all about in that I haven't ordered anything lately because it's been expensive COVID and basically here in Canada our our standard living has almost doubled so our our not our standard of living but the cost of everything has doubled but our salaries have remained the same so I haven't had the extra cash lately so I haven't ordered anything of late now there is there is also I have I have some stuff here okay so we're going to, I we're going to go through some aircraft that the Japanese had before World War II and before and off the topic of German ones. Now, from what I can understand, just, I don't know, not sure, during or after World War I, the Japanese had some Newport 17s, or there could be 23s. I'm not too sure which one, because they look the same. Now, for Kitson, in that, those aircraft in 72nd scale we have Edward which is an excellent kit kit the Revell kit which is an old kit and Essie's kit they're old kits Ron kit and Ron has it but I'm not too sure the quality of that one in 48th scale you have Edward which again would be an excellent kit and an older kit in Revell in one and both these are in 48th scale. In 132nd scale, there's only two. You have the um, Cooper State Models kit, which I have built, and it's an excellent model. Now, the other one is the Academy kit, which is a former Hobbycraft kit. Now, that kit goes together well, but it lacks the detail like the um, Cooper State Models does. But you can... If you have a little bit of skills, it's not hard to scratch build the interior. I did the Academy kit and I scratch built the interior, and it's pretty darn close to the one that see the uh, Cooper State gave me. So the Japanese managed to get some Selman Sun two A two uh, twin seat. Uh, reconnaissance fighter bomber which uh, when uh, um, Japanese built on the license under the O2 OTSU 1 now you can get this kit in 172nd scale KP has a nice kit out right now 
uh, in 148 scale, the only one I can find in 48 scale is Gas Patch. And Gas Patch is being put out some really nice kits in 48 scale. And of course, you got the 132nd scale from Wing Nut Wings, which is an excellent kit. Now, they also managed to get some float planes. They had the Hansa Brandenburg W29. Now, a little bit of warning. The, the nose of the Japanese version is slightly different than the German version. I'm putting up a picture of a painting of one of these. But they did have them. Now, if you want to do a conversion, in 172nd scale, MPM has one. Now, I know you can get uh, a Pegasus. Pegasus one in 172nd scale, but I wouldn't bother with it. Now, Flashback has a one for the 8th scale version of this kit, which I'm not too sure the quality, but I've, I've heard some hits and misses with that company. And, of course, again, we have the 132nd scale Wing Nut Wings version. Now, they also managed to get themselves some SPAD 13s. I'm not too sure how many. I'd have, you'd have to look it up. But in kits, in 172nd scale, you have the Essie's kit. And I think there's an Edward kit, but I have to check. I know Edward's got a 148 scale, which is a really excellent kit. Now, in 32nd scale, you have the Hobbycraft kit which I got. You can build a decent model of it, but hey, it's Hobbycraft. Now, Roden recently in 2023 put out a brand new kit of the SPAD 13, and I heard it's really good. I haven't had a chance to get my hands on one. It's on my list of things to do. Now, if you want to build a, a bigger version, you have the Revell 128 scale kit. Now, that's like, we're talking 60s, early 70s kits. So, if you got the skill set to build the interior, then you can go that, that route. I also forgot to mention that Revell put out, put out a SPAD 13 too. I think it's an old, I'm not too sure if it's an old monogram kit. Or it's an old tester's kit. I'm not too sure. I have you have to look up, but it it's billable. Now the Japanese also managed to to get some um, Dio Twain. Dio Twain. I'm sorry. I'm butchering the number. The the name D five tens. Now. In 172nd scale, we have the Heller kit, which is an older kit, but it's not a bad kit, but lacks detail. We have the uh, Pavlu models kit, which Pavlu it has very nice models. So you wouldn't couldn't go wrong there. But the kit that you would probably be interested in is the KP kit because it actually comes in the Japanese markings. Now in 148th and 132nd scale you get this, this kit by Dora Wings and both come with the Japanese markings. Now another aircraft that wasn't mentioned on the video that before the before the German and be, Germans and before the war was the Ava BA33. Now, there's only two kits of that one. There's 172nd scale kit by MPM Models, which comes in the Japanese markings. And a 148 scale kit by Professional Models. And I think it either comes with the de Japanese decals or you can get the Japanese decals for it. I'm not too sure. Now, another aircraft that they was mentioned that the Germans use was the was the Italian Fiat BR20. Now there's only two kits of that one. 
you got the 170 cycle scale kit by Italieri, but you can get the Japanese decals from, from Rising Decals for that one. And in 148 scale, the only one you got is Classic Airframes, which comes with the Japanese markings. Now onto the German aircraft. First aircraft mentioned was the Hinkle 100D. Now, we're fortunate that Special Hobbies makes both both the 172nd and 132nd scale. The 172nd scale does come with the Japanese markings, or in the prototype, I should say. So putting Japanese markings on it, it might be in the box or like it, or you can just get generic Japanese uh, Hermaros. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'll just call them, I will just call them um, rundels because all you would have is a serial number on it and I'm pretty sure it was delivered in bare metal. Planet Hobbies has one in 148 so does high PM models in 132nd scale we have the special hobbies which does come as a prototype version with and I think they have Japanese markings in that one. Now for the other Hinkle that the Japanese bought we have the Hinkle 112. Now in 72nd scale we have the Heller kit which has also been reboxed by um, Encore which was a uh, squadron signal product and then we have RS models which also has which also comes with the Japanese decals in it so you got that one if you want to go that route now 148 scale we have rest models which I don't think they have the have the um, Japanese markings in but LF models does and it comes in with the Japanese it comes in a Japanese boxing and then there's the classic airframes version which is it looks like a nice looking kit but but to um, but for Japanese markings you would have to probably buy it by a 148 scale generic decal set and make out some markings. I think the markings on the Hinkle 112 were pretty generic. I don't think they even had numbers, but it's hard to say. You would have to do a little research into that. So the next aircraft that was mentioned was the Messerschmitt 109E7. Now, my choice in 172nd would be right off the top of the heap is the fine molds, because fine molds makes really good models. And you happen to, they happen to make a boxing with the with the Jap, with Japanese markings on it. Now, you also have the Edward kit, which is an excellent kit. But there there again you you will have to scrounge up markings or tape the mask off other markings like the all oh, he needs a circle cutter to cut the Japanese um, on dowels out and well you basically can use any 72nd scale kit there's a lot of good kits out there in 148 scale we have the Edward kit which would be an excellent kit to build now the recent 148 scale Airfix kit would be a good candidate too. And I'm pretty sure if you're a monogram fan, you can get the monogram kit fairly easily if you want to go that route. In 132nd scale, my top two choices would be Dragon. I built the Dragon kit. It's a great kit. The only flaw it has is that it gives you a loose 
a loose cowling, but it won't but it won't sit down properly. So you'd have to leave the engine engine exposed. Wait a minute. No, it does sit. Sorry, I my mistake. It's just if you do any detailing, it won't fit because it's a pretty pretty tight fit. Then you have the Edward kit. Now the Edward kit comes with an engine, but it only exposes the top, where the Dragon kit exposes everything. But you can get an up, you can get a um, update detail set for the Edward kit and bring it up to snuff. And you have the Hasegawa, the Adventurable Hasegawa kit, which has its flaws. It will, if you build it, it will look like look like an E7, but if you put it up to its modern com contemporaries, it doesn't uh, measure up anymore. But if you want to go that route, want an easy kit just to throw together, that's the one. And if you want to build a BF109 E7 in 124 scale, then you have to go with the Airfix kit. Now the Airfix kit has a great interior. I have built it. It has a great interior. It has engine detail, but everything's molded in one. And uh, um, the ammo, the ammo bins is something a little or less than desirable. And it has absolutely no wheel well interior. You would have to do. A little, you would have to find some way of, of uh, scratch building the interior, or if we get lucky someday, maybe somebody will come along with a 3D printed version. Now, the Messerschmitt B, BF-108, we have one kit in KP, which should be KP models, which should be good. Edward does a 148 scale kit and I think it comes with Japanese markings and it has a 132nd scale kit which you can get markings for. Now Volker Wolf 190 A5. Now they only sent one and it was an A5. You can't use any other other variants other than an A5. The best best bet for for that in 172nd scale is the Edward kit. It will Edward makes really excellent kits lately and their 109 series and all the scale in both scales is really outstanding. Then you have the Hasawa, Hasegawa kit. So you can't go wrong with Hasegawa. They made some, their, their, their interiors are pretty sparse, but I think you can get uh, a resin interior for it. But it will build up in, into a nice model in 72nd scale. In 148 scale, again, Edward, it, uh, they did it. I've heard people rave about this kit. I don't personally build 148 scale, but I've heard people rave about it. The monogram kit is an A5, but it's showing, it holds its tests in time, but it, but it's a monogram. So it will build into a nice model. And um, you can't if you just want if you just want to build a model, monogram's a cheap way to go. And Dragon has an A5, but it has uh, it's also a U4, which has the torpedo hanging under it. So I think you can build an A5 out of that straight up A5. In one thirty second scale, the only A you can get is the Hasegawa kit. Now Hasegawa 8 Fork Wolf 190s are, are a good kit. I've, I've built a couple and they're not that bad. Now to get an A5 in any bigger scale you would have to go to the 124 scale Airfix kit. Now the Airfix kit, well, I should have mentioned before, back, if you want to build a, a bigger kit, you would have to go with uh, um, 
one twenty fourth scale airfix kit. Now it's the only one in the A5 124 scale. Now, bit of a warning, it does have a great interior. It does have a wonderful engine if you want to expose it. And it you know you have your you can expose the guns in it. The only drawback it has is that if you build it with the cowling on the uh, engine mounts are a little little long so you would have to cut back the engine mounts a little bit to get everything to fit but otherwise and the only other drawback is the the landing gear now it lacks the sidewalls if i remember correctly building the last one i built it lacks the sidewalls but then it, it's but you got the other parts of the of the um undercarriage so it wouldn't be too hard just to use some um sheet styrene and build up that area now if you want to really go mad and and scale hobby boss has a 118 scale well, I hear it's not too bad, but that's a little large for my liking. Now for the Seoul ME210 that was sent to the Japanese, you can get uh, markings for it in 172nd scale. Now in 172nd scale, you have only two choices, the Atelieri kit, which is not a bad kit. It builds up well. And the Revell kit, which I surmise is the Atelier kit. In 148 scale, the only 148 I can find is IF models, which is a, I believe is a resin kit. So that's the only choice you have there. Now the Juka, Junkers JU87A, we have several choices. The 172nd scale, we got special hobbies, which comes in the Japanese markings. It's a nice kit, but it I think it needs, uh, I have it, but I'm trying to remember. I'll have to do a review one day. But it has the, but you need probably a resin interior. And I think, I think Lone Star Models has one, if they still have it. Otherwise, I think you can just use a straight up JU87B cockpit. No, in 72nd scale, nobody would notice. In 148 scale, again, we have special hobbies. They have an upscaled version too, which I hear is not too bad. Now, in 132nd scale, we have the trumpeter kits. The only one in 32nd scale that, that's the Anton. And believe it or not, they also did a 124 scale if you're up to it. All you need to do is uh, scrounge up some markings because there wasn't, it was, I believe it was done in the early splinter scheme of the, the green, the brown, and the gray. You have to check your references, but I'm pretty sure. Now, the next aircraft that was mentioned is the Hinkle 118. Now there was only, I think they said only 12 built or something like that. So, and they sent one example to the Japanese. So basic, I've seen pictures of it. So it's basically, it's a bare metal model. I don't even think they put markings on it. They might have. So if you just put, just put the rundown meatballs on it, you should be all right. Anyways, the, for 170s, Second, you got planet models and air model, and that's it. And there's no 148 scale that I could I can ascertain, but I could be wrong. And I'll put it up if, if I find it and I'm, and I'm wrong. Now, for the Hinkle 70, you got three choice choices in 172nd scale. We have the matchbox kit, which I built. It's a typical matchbox kit, so 
beware on that. But it will build into a nice model. And it gives you um, an option for radio radio engine version versus uh, inline. Now that kit also has been been uh, brought out again by Revell under their banner because they bought Matchbox. The kit that should be better is the ICM kit in one seventy second scale. So you should it should be a good model there. The only 148 scale model I found of this kit is the AZ models. And AC is, from what I understand, is hit and miss. I've never never had the pleasure of building one of their models. So I couldn't give you a positive or negative uh, review on that one. Now the Bucker BU-133, we have two kits in 172nd scale. We have the RS models kit that you can get in Japanese markings and the Hama kit, if you can get a hold of a Hama kit. NPM makes 148 scale version of that. And I'm not sure if ICM does one in 148 scale, but I know they do a 138 one thirty second scale B one thirteen and it comes in Japanese markings. So we're kind of we kind of lucked out there in the thirty second scale version. Now as for the FI one fifty six starch, you have in one seventy second scale you got two choices. You got the AC models, which again I can't I can't tell you whether it's a good model or not. And the Academy model, which isn't too bad for 172nd scale. In 148 scale, we have the Tamiya kit, which should be an outstanding model. And I believe there's one other kit in 148 scale. I'll have to look it up. I'm still looking, but I know there is another one. And I'll, I'll post that up too. So you see what model it is. Oh, it's the SC's kit. That's what it is. I forgot about the SC's kit. Now, 132nd scale, the only one you can get is the Hasegawa kit. And it's not a bad kit. So you should be able to make a Japanese version out of that one. Now, if you really want to go a little bit, well, not bigger, actually 135th is a smaller than 132nd scale, you got the Hobby Boss kit, which is, I hear is pretty good. Now, in 172nd scale, there is a radio engine version that the Japanese did. It's, it's, it's got the same body and that, but it's it has a different name. It's called the KI-76 Stella. Now, there's only two kits and they're in 72nd scale. One's by um, CMR Models, which I think is Czech Models. And another one by Exotic 72. And that's the only kits you're going to get out of that one. Now, he's talked about the Mitsubishi JU8M1 copy of the Messerschmitt 162. Now, there's one kit in 72nd scale, and that's from MPM models. And in 148 scale, there's a fine molds one, which should be an excellent model. Fine molds does excellent models. I have to admit, I've had a couple. I got a couple of them in my stash, and they look really good. You should see their 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 Phantoms and their F14s. They're they're to die for. Anyways, now there's a whole host. If you want to do a conversion in 32nd scale, there is none. There is no no J8M1 
in 30 second scale. So you would have to modify a kit. So you would have to either go with the Hasegawa kit, which would be cheaper, and you can chop it up. Or if you want to go a little more expensive, you can go the, the Meg kit if you want. Ming kit. Now, he also mentioned that that the Germans used uh, Nakajimi E8 and Dave. They were piloted by um, German pilots, but they were in Japanese markings. Now, the only two kits, now, in 72nd scale, RS Models makes one. Exotic 72 makes one. And the only other one, 72 scale, is um, is a resin model by um, Charozo Z Model Bud. I'll put that one up. I, I'm sorry if I'm butchering, butchering the words, but hey, not... Not everybody's a linguistic these days, so. Now, if you want to build a really excellent kit in 48 scale, the only one you got is Hasegawa. And it, I've heard it, it's, it's a really good kit. Now, it, just for a side note, getting a little off topic, they also also flew from the same base as the, as the um, E8. E8 and Dave is the RDO 196. Now, again, it was piloted by Germans, but it had Japanese rondels on it. It looks kind of sharp in that, too. It was in German camouflage scheme, too. Now, the two kits you can get is the 172nd scale airfix kit, and the Revell kit. There might be a better 172nd scale kit out there, but that's the only two I could find at the moment. In 148 scale, you have high PM models, which I believe it's a resin kit. Or you can go with the really remote injection Italieri kit, which I hear is not too bad. Now, in 32nd scale, the only one there is is the Revell kit. And I've heard some good things about that kit. I have yet to build one, but maybe someday. And that's just about it. So, well, I hope you enjoyed that video. And please remember to subscribe to my channel and punch that like button. You also can donate to my channel through my PayPal, which is on the main page of my channel. And you also can donate through Patreon. So, as always, every build is an adventure, so go make it awesome. And we'll see you again later. And you have a good day. Goodbye.